I can see them. I can see them now. Faces like gargoyles. And hands and feet. Claws. They have claws. They're ugly and hideous. They can see us, too. We find you earth people equally repulsive. But we are more tolerant. Theater 5 presents First Encounter. What does he think we've been trying? Take it easy, Joe. Try again. Margaret, anything on your board? All systems check. We're transmitting, Clay. I'm sure of it. Okay, okay. Orion 1 to Space Central. I hope you hear this one. Orion 1 in moon orbit. Repeat, in moon orbit. All systems A-OK. Over. Should be at checkpoint Z. Ready for landing. Space Central to Orion 1. Come in, Orion 1. Mm, rack it up biggest moment in history, and they've blown a tube in their receiver. Well, the folks on Earth will have to get their news late on the playback from our tape. Yeah, at least it's working. Clay, I just got a strange reading from the nose sensor. Temperature suddenly shot up 400 degrees, and then it dropped. Are you sure? The drop is normal. We're over the dark side of the moon now, but... That's just it, Clay. The jump in temperature took place as we crossed the temperate zone between the light and dark sides of the moon. That could mean sudden friction. Yes, caused by... An atmosphere is circling the temperate zone of the moon. Atmosphere? Oh, it seems impossible. Joe, fire the retro rockets. I'm going on manual control. We're holding at one half mile per second. Well, that'll keep us from burning up if it is atmosphere. Air on the moon? Well, that could mean the possibility of life. Altitude 53 miles, nose temperature now constant at 280 degrees. Good. Good enough to boil us alive. Nothing clear on the TV monitor. More retro, Joe. Just a little. Velocity slowing, altitude 30 miles. Look at that monitor. Mountains. The Cordilleras. All systems, final check. Space suits first. Suits fine. Cabin pressure okay. Stern landing gear extended. Starting vertical ascent. Periscope swung to stern. Seems clear below. Ascent slowing. Free fall starting. 37 miles. 32. 26. Counter blast. Amen. Me too. Okay. Let's get out of these harnesses and put on our weighted boots. If there's atmosphere, there may be wind. Yes, and with a lesser gravity on the moon, a slight breeze would blow us for miles. Clay, take a look at this gauge. There's oxygen out there, all right. Mm. But we don't know how much or what else is in the atmosphere until we test it. Till we do, we keep our spacesuits sealed. All right, everybody, suit up and into the airlock. All right, Joe. Let's open the hatch and lower the ladder. All right. Earthman's first close-up view of the moon. Joe, climb down and stack the equipment as Margaret and I lower it. And be sure to stake it down. <clears throat> okay, here I go. Captain Joseph Gregson, first Earthman on the moon. Clay, you're still calm as cream. What will it take to excite you? Oh, not much, Marge. Just the look on the faces of my kids and my wife when we get back. Sorry, Clay. Oh, this oxygen tank, it seems to weigh less than nothing. Your sample kit, aerated spray paint, Geiger counter. I'm bringing the tape recorder, Clay. The president's dedication. We therefore dedicate this expedition to all the peoples of Earth and pray that this beginning on virgin territory, unsoiled by man's tragic history, shall give birth to a new understanding among our nations. 
I, Major Clayton Brown, as commander of Orion 1, have been instructed to express my own feelings at this moment. We are looking at Earth. We can see it turning, see the sun shining on continents. Other continents are in the shadows of night. Yet as Earth turns, I, I realize that each part of the world, each nation, will get equal shares of the sun's light. Maybe that's what God intended. <clears throat> All right, let's get to work. Well, it is a plant, and it is green. Photosynthesis is taking place. That means the atmosphere has carbon dioxide and water vapor. And I found no evidence of toxicity, Clay. Okay. Stand by with the respirator while I take off my helmet. Right. Well, if this isn't air, it's a good substitute. Come on. Let's get up to the crest of this small crater and get our bearings. Right. Hmm, there's rock erosion, but it's hardly more than sand. Slight radioactivity. Not enough to be dangerous. It's coming from these rocks. Now, I'll take a sample. You two go on ahead. Looks like a level plane down there. Too level to be natural. Hey, Clay, quick. The oxygen tank floated off. I started to chase it, but it just disappeared. I told you to be careful. The slightest there wind. There wasn't any wind. Clay, I feel something. I can't explain it, but it's like someone watching me. <laughs> The tank was lying right here. I turned my back to get the ore sample, and then I saw it floating over this way. Look. Are those marks on the sand? They look like tiny claw marks. Marge, go to the ship. Joe and I... Now, look, that's an order. All right. But take off those weighted boots. If you see something, you'll have an advantage. Good thinking. We'll join you in a minute or two. Whose idea was it to send a woman on this expedition? Oh, hurry up with those boots. Margaret's at the ship. Now, let's see if there's a trail of these marks. There. Right over... Clay. The tracks, I, I see them moving. The sand's being kicked aside. Whatever it is, it's invisible. Help! Help me! Clay, she's gone. That sound, some sort of vehicle. Look. These parallel marks leading down toward the plane. Let's go. Wait. Those spray cans of paint. Maybe if we spray, we'll be able to see what we're fighting. The vehicle tracks. Did they, did they peter out here near the rocks? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. But the claw tracks go on. <laughs> Whatever made them disappeared, too. That ledge. It, it looks like an entrance to a cave. Yeah. It's a tight squeeze. <laughs> Made us. Steps. Well, but these walls glow. If you feel anything, start spraying. Yeah. A door. This lever. It's stuck. Let's pull together. Uh, come on. Uh, All right, where do we go from here? There must be a hundred doors. No. This one, quick. No, this room's empty. Marge, where are you? Glass partition. Yeah. Look, she's strapped to that table. That instrument. It's moving right toward her eyes. Yeah. I gotta smash this thing. Clay! Something's grabbed me. I, I can't see. Spray, quick! I'm being carried, but I can't see what or who. <laughs> see them or hear their voices. Are they here now? Why have they placed me in this room? And where are the others? All right! You don't have to shout! You can only see them. Joe. Well, we're alive. Where's Marge? I don't know. They put me on a table, too. But they were gentle. 
We could only see them. I did see part of a face when I sprayed the paint. Like no human on earth. Hideous. I don't get it, Clay. How could an invisible race evolve? Well, I'm sure they're not invisible to each other. Oh? Apparently, their coloration is beyond our visible spectrum. Perhaps there's an entire range of colors which we can't perceive, but they're perfectly visible to a looning. Maybe that's why they examined our eyes so carefully. And we don't hear any voices. Could their sounds be pitched above our audible range? Maybe. March. Joe, Clay, I... Oh, why did you follow me? Just because I'm a woman? Now, none of us will get... March. Here, Joe. If Joe had been carried off, we'd have tried to rescue him. Sure, the success of the expedition is important, but we're still human. So man or woman, let's stay human if we can. What? What are we going to do? Take it easy, honey. We don't know yet. That wall, look. It's changing. I can see through it. Yes, it's becoming transparent. It looks like some kind of a throne room. It's strange light. <gasps> I can see them. Them. Faces like gargoyles. And hands and feet. Claws. They sure aren't pretty. But they're humanoid, and apparently very advanced. Once they determined that they were invisible to us, they devised that light so we could see them. They're all looking in our direction. Well, go on, take a good look. Easy, Joe. What? What's that sound? Earth people, do not fear. The voice, where did it come from? It didn't seem to come from anywhere except from inside my own head. Telepathy. Yes. We have created a telepathic field in which communication is total. You may either speak or think. All is understood. I am Bar, ruler of the moon. You will not be harmed, rest assured. <laughs> we find you equally repulsive, but we are more tolerant. We, we are the first Earthmen to land on the moon. We have come in peace. In peace, you are welcome. Well, why did you grab us? We sent a delegation to greet you. We found you could neither see nor hear us. It was decided then to examine you for your deficiencies. Your eyes have a very limited range, and you are incapable of hearing any but the obvious sounds. The woman still fears harm. Forgive me. Will you permit us to return to Earth? You will remain in peace. Wait a minute. You can't mean... The decision has been made. No other expedition will be permitted to land on the moon. Their radio will be silenced as yours was silenced. Their ships will be destroyed. You shall be the only earthlings permitted to dwell on the moon. Why did you spare us? Curiosity. Major Brown, we cannot permit Earth to conquer the moon. But we had no idea the moon was inhabited. There's no need for conquest. We could live together, sharing. Share? Live in harmony? We have studied our mother planet for centuries. There has been far more war than peace. At this very moment on Earth, men are dying for no better reason than greed. We dedicated this expedition to peace between nations. Earth's peoples must learn to live on Earth before expanding to new worlds. Eons ago, when man on Earth had not yet evolved, the moon was fully inhabited. An atmosphere covered our entire surface as the moon revolved on its axis at a greater speed. We were many nations then, all highly advanced. But our scientific progress outdistanced our ethical progress. Several nations vied to be the first to explore Earth. You had harnessed nuclear energy? It harnessed us. We are descendants of the few survivors of the last war on the moon. Our atmosphere was all but destroyed in the nuclear holocaust. The moon's rotation slowed so that one side is always exposed to the burning sun and the other to perennial darkness. Only a narrow zone between the two supports life. Thus, we are now one nation, one civilization, dedicated to eternal peace. But let us take back this knowledge to Earth. Let us convince our nations. Earth must know its own purification. Out of its ashes shall come men who will remember and tell each succeeding generation. Then perhaps thousands of years hence, Earth men will be ready to explore other worlds in peace. We're ready now. Listen, a hundred expeditions will follow us. Oh, sure, you'll destroy some of them, but some will get through. Then you'll wish you had... You threaten? You, supposedly a man of peace? How would the others treat the inhabitants of the moon? They would attempt to enslave us. You shall remain on the moon for the rest of your lives. Well, I don't know what 
what this food is, but it'll never replace steak. Well, we're going to have a long time getting used to it. Maybe not. Look, Clay, I'm afraid to think anything. They can't read our minds unless one of those machines is turned on, and we can hear the hum. Are you sure? Positive. I had a telepathic conversation with one of their scientists. I was careful to keep out any thoughts about escape. Clay, do you have a plan? The loonings are so convinced of their superiority that they don't believe we'll attempt to escape. You know the ship is just as we left it. Look, Clay, I know they've given us total freedom, but don't sell them short. I'll bet they've got a ray or something that they'll blast us apart with before we can hit escape velocity. The loonings have no such weapons. How do you know? Until now, they had no need for any. Remember, they're one nation. Oh, they have the knowledge, all right. If more expeditions start coming, I don't doubt they'll work out a defense system. What puzzles me is, with all their knowledge and scientific ability, why hadn't they explored Earth? They did, with radar telescopes and interceptor radio waves. You mean they picked up our television broadcasts? What a mixed-up picture of our civilization they must have gotten. I'm afraid they accumulated a very accurate picture of nations at war. That's why they don't want anything to do with us. Clay, I... I don't want to live out my life on the moon. I second that motion. Even if they've got weapons we don't know about. Okay. Now, let's go up to the surface. We walk on a sand path so we'll be able to spot any moving footprints. And if you should hear the hum from a telepathic machine, put your mind on any subject but escape. Well, there she is. Old Orion 1. I wonder if there's a guard on board. Let's find out. It doesn't seem possible that we're not being watched. Pull up the ladder and close the hatch, Joe. Ah, it's too easy. They're going to blow us up. I know. Start checking systems. Cabin pressure up. Oxygen okay. Attach harnesses. Ready to fire engines. Ready. Fire. Orion 1, delighted to accept the invitation. You boys take over now. You're entering the ionosphere. Radio blackout due at any moment. Happy landing. Well, all we can do now is relax. You worried, Clay? Yes. Well, after we report to the president, he'll take over from there. That sound. Earthmen, it is now the time to make our presence known to you. They're right here on the ship. You'll let us escape. It was the wish of our ruler that you transport us to Earth. But we would have been glad to. There was no need to stow away. Our ruler is wise. He reasoned that if you knew of our mission, you would destroy your ship and yourselves. You are now controlled by radio beams from Earth. You can do nothing to prevent our landing with you. What are you going to do? We shall live among you, undetected by your inferior vision. Our mission is to bring peace to the nations of the Earth. Peace? And why the subterfuge? I think I know. The loonings believe that peace on Earth can be attained only the way they achieved peace on the moon, through nuclear war. Yes. We will help you achieve peace. We can do it without war. We shall see, Earthman. We shall see. Will you wait? Will you give us a chance to tell the world? Is there much time? There is time. Theater 5 has presented First Encounter, written by Leonard Stad and directed by Warren Somerville. In the cast, Jackson Beck, Tony Darnay, William Mason, Brett Morrison, and Robert Dryden. Audio engineer Neil Pulse, sound technician Ed Blaney, script editor Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlasdotsenko, orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. This has been an ABC Radio Network production.